The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 1,215,736. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 22,960. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 6,966 with total confirmed deaths at 191. We anticipate those numbers to increase as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Ben McCain. It's 4 p.m. on Thursday, March 25th. Homebound seniors in Torrance will soon have the opportunity to get the coronavirus vaccine, and it's thanks to the partnership between the city of Torrance, the Torrance Fire Department, and the Torrance Memorial Medical Center. This pilot program has been in the works for weeks to develop a strategy to reach homebound seniors in the city who may need a vaccine but have limited mobility. In the city, there are potentially more than 1,500 homebound seniors, according to the Department of Health Services, who agreed to provide the Johnson & Johnson one-dose vaccine to support the effort. Torrance Memorial Medical Center will assist with reaching out to seniors on the list to determine if they truly are homebound and need the vaccine. They'll also receive the vaccine order on behalf of the Torrance Fire Department, store the vaccine and register patients, and draw up the doses to be administered. Torrance will kick off the pilot program tomorrow. We will be sure to bring you updates on this collaborative effort. Well, beginning Monday, Torrance will host a vaccine clinic to those in tiers 1A and 1B. The focus will be to help get Torrance's older residents vaccinated, those who may have had a difficult time scheduling an appointment through the state or county or just haven't had a chance to sign up for one yet. It's taking place on Monday at the Ken Miller Recreation Center. Those who are eligible include adults 65 and older, those who work for the city of Torrance in health care or for the school district. The city is currently working with local senior centers to reach out to residents and ensure every senior is offered the vaccine. 300 doses of the Pfizer vaccine will be available on Monday for first dose shots with a second dose clinic expected to take place on April 19th. If you or someone you know that is eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine would like to sign up, they can call the city's senior hotline at 310-320-5918. Those who are not 65 and older must show proof of eligibility. California Governor Gavin Newsom held a press briefing this morning at a vaccination site in Orange County. He shared news that vaccine eligibility will expand dramatically as soon as April 1st, when anyone 50 and older will be able to make appointments to receive their shot and becoming April and beginning April 15th, anyone 16 and older will be eligible to get their shot. Governor Newsom said with vaccine supply increasing by expanding eligibility to more Californians, the light at the end of the tunnel continues to get brighter. The state expects to receive about 2.5 million first and second dose vaccines per week in the first half of April and more than 3 million doses in the second half of the month. Los Angeles Dodgers fans will soon be able to return to watching games in person. Well, a limited number of fans will now, with 20% capacity, allowed to attend in person. Socially distanced pods of two, three, four, five, or six seats will be available for purchase this season. The team announced its latest COVID-19 fan safety portal which includes protocols in place to safely welcome back visitors this season. Rules include wearing face masks except when eating or drinking in their seats. All tickets will be issued digitally through the Major League Baseball Ballpark app, ensuring touchless entry to the park. The park also promises to offer a safe and clean environment for fans to enjoy Dodger baseball. Guests will be allowed to carry one clear bag the size of a one-gallon freezer bag, but no backpack cooler or large purses will be allowed. Food purchases will also be contactless and cashless. Fans may also notice 13 new Dunkin' Donuts sites throughout the park as they're now the official coffee and donut partner of the Dodgers. Now, in order to get tickets for opening day, which is Friday, April 9th, fans will have to register online to be put into a lottery. Tickets will be sold for face value and only be eligible to those who submit a registration form during the registration period, which started on March 22nd and closes on March 28th. 
Gas prices continue to be on the rise in Southern California. In places like West Los Angeles, prices are nearing the $5 a gallon mark for premium gas. Consumer watchdog officials say there is a higher demand due to more post-pandemic driving, reduced output from local refineries, and less supply from OPEC. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of unleaded gasoline in Los Angeles now stands at $3.93, which is 69 cents higher than a year ago. Industry experts say uh, don't expect pump prices to get better anytime soon as we head into the summer months. On the Gas Buddy website, the cheapest gas that came up for Torrance was at Costco at $3.59 a gallon, Arco on Sepulveda and Ocean at $3.65, and $3.77 at the 7-Eleven gas station on Torrance and Madrona Avenue. You can download the free app or go online to gasbuddy.com to find the lowest gas prices near you. California Governor Gavin Newsom nominated the state's next attorney general, State Assemblyman Rob Bonta, a 48-year-old Democrat from the East-South San Francisco Bay Area, would be the first Filipino-American to hold the state's, state's top law enforcement job in the nation's most populous state. If Bonta is confirmed, he would replace Javier Becerra, who was confirmed last week as President Joe Biden's Health and Human Services Secretary. Bonta has authored laws to phase out private prisons, automatically expunge marijuana convictions, and end the cash bail system, though voters rejected the bail change last November. He also authored legislation that requires the governor's office to conduct independent investigations of police shootings where an unarmed person dies. Bonta, who was born in the Philippines to missionary parents, was brought to California when he was two months old. He graduated from Yale Law School and returned to California and went into private practice working pro bono to protect Californians from exploitation and racial profiling. He said in a statement that he became a lawyer because he saw the law as the best way to make a positive difference and it would be an honor of a lifetime to serve as the attorney for the people of this great state. He was elected to the California State Assembly's 18th District in 2012. Governor Newsom said, Rob represents what makes California great, our desire to take our righteous fights and reverse systemic injustices. Growing up with parents steeped in social justice movements, he's become a national leader in the fight to repair our justice system and defend the rights of every Californian. UK drug maker AstraZeneca released updated data for their COVID-19 vaccines U.S. trial study the company faced criticism earlier this week over accuracy from its preliminary report. The company now says its vaccine is actually 76% effective in protecting against symptomatic cases of the virus instead of the 79% it had initially claimed. AstraZeneca reiterated that the vaccine was well tolerated among participants and that no safety concerns were identified. Officials also said at the time the figures were based on a pre-specified interim analysis and vowed to share updated analysis in the coming days. White House Chief Medical Advisor and Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases called the situation unfortunate and said, quote, this is really what you call an unforced error because the fact is this is very likely a very good vaccine. AstraZeneca included more than 32 participants in the U.S. study. The findings suggest that vac the vaccine is more effective in patients age 65 and older than previously understood and reported a new efficacy rate of 85% for that population, up from the previous stated 80% and 100% effective against severe disease and hospitalization. AstraZeneca's vaccine is already authorized for the use in other countries. Company officials say they plan to file for an emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. More stimulus money is on its way. That's according to the U.S. Treasury Department. Another 37 million economic impact payments were sent out on Wednesday, bringing the total dispersed amount between the past two weeks to $325 billion. The second batch of payments sent out this week followed an initial 90 million payments made after President Joe Biden signed the $1.9 trillion COVID relief measure on March 11th. The Treasury says the plan is to keep rolling out payments in batches over the coming weeks. This latest group included direct deposits as well as paper checks and debit cards mailed to households. Qualified individuals should expect payments of up to $1,400.
President Joe Biden held his first White House press conference this morning. Since taking office, President Biden said he was doubling his original goal of COVID-19 vaccines by pledging the nation would administer 200 million doses. He was pressed by reporters on a number of topics and challenges that have taken place in the first three months of his presidency. He said his administration has been focused on controlling the pandemic and the economic fallout and will now begin to look at other issues like immigration reform, gun control, and voting rights. He even answered one reporter's question about whether or not he would run for re-election in 2024, and he said that was his expectation. The White House limited the attendance to 30 socially distanced chairs for journalists and took questions with the meeting lasting a little more than an hour. U.S. jobless claims fell this week to 684,000, the lowest since the start of the pandemic. In the latest report published by the U.S. Department of Labor, it showed that the number of new claims dropped significantly, showing signs that the economy is improving. The new report published today showed that jobless claims fell from 781,000 the week before, the first time weekly applications have fallen below 700,000 since mid-March of last year. Still, a total of 18.9 million people continue to collect unemployment benefits up from the week prior. Roughly one-third of those recipients are in extended federal aid programs, which means they've been unemployed for at least six months. The economy is showing signs of growth as hiring increased in February by 379 new jobs added to the workforce, which more than doubled January's total. Businesses in need of some financial assistance who were impacted by the pandemic will now have another opportunity. The California Small Business COVID-19 Relief Grant Program opens today for its fifth round. Applications will be accepted starting today through March 31st. Governor Newsom signed into law a comprehensive package providing urgent relief for small businesses in the state. There will be $729 million available for distribution. While it's not on a first-come First serve basis, it will be based on annual gross revenues for the 2019 tax year, and eligible businesses could receive five, fifteen, or twenty-five thousand dollar grants based on their revenue. Now, if businesses have already applied and have been put on the wait list, they do not need to reapply as they will be automatically enrolled into round five. To learn more, go to CaliforniaReliefGrant.com. Well, as we wrap up this week, be sure to tune in to Weekends in Torrance beginning Friday right here on City Cable. New episodes air at 2 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Find out how Torrance teachers, administrators, and students continue to adapt to the ongoing changes throughout the pandemic and the resiliency they've shown. Then see what you may have missed at the Torrance Art Museum as we take you inside for a -a one-of-a-kind exhibit. And as the county begins to allow for small events, ceremonies, and meetings to take place, learn how the Torrance Cultural Arts Center may be the perfect place to host your next small event. We'll show you all of the safety protocols and sanitization efforts in place to ensure a safe visit. These stories and much more kick off tomorrow at 2 p.m. You can find us on Spectrum Cable Channel 3, Verizon Files Channel 31, and streaming on our website as well as on YouTube. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share feel-good stories from our community, pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, each year, the City of Torrance honors employees celebrating a milestone in their career. Those who've reached their five-year anniversary with the city or increments of five years are honored with a special ceremony and luncheon. Well, like most things throughout this pandemic, the ceremony had to be canceled and Instead, employees are being celebrated virtually and with a gift basket of goodies to commemorate this special milestone. The city is also putting together a video tribute for everyone who is celebrating with a message from special guests in the city. City leaders have said it's the work of the dedicated employees who help make Torrance the wonderful place that it is to live, work, and play. Congratulations to every city employee celebrating their career milestone It's through your commitment to the city that truly shows how you care for your community. Now, if you have a great story, upcoming event, a photo or video you'd like to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID19 today. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be back on Monday as Leslie Robbins brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.